Hi, I'm Rongji. In this video, you will learn how to conduct a physical layer conformance test for Bluetooth 6 SGT using KSI signal generation and analysis toolkit. So I'll be showing you four live demo cases to highlight the power and efficiency of the KSI toolkit for the Bluetooth 6 HDT vesicle layer testing. So before we dive into the demo, let's take a look at the key enhancements in the vesicle layer. The BRE6 HDT operates in the 2.4 GHz ISM band, enabling higher day rates and better performance, especially for applications like audio streaming. It also has the potential to utilize 6 GHz band for more bandwidth and less interference. So BRE HDT supports 5 data rates with different modulation schemes. HDT4 is meant trained for both transmitter and receiver side. BRE HTT has three packet formats, the short format, which carries no user data, format 0 designed for a single block of user data, format 1, which handles multiple blocks for greater flexibility. All formats have a preamble of 37 microseconds, and the control header, which lasts 32 microseconds, consists of 64 bits that vary by format. The PFI packet format indicator marks format 0 as 0 and format 1 as 1. The rate indicator uses 3 bits to specify different data rates. And in format 1, the physical layer interval size is indicated by 2 bits, offering 4 different duration options here. The PDU header has 4 portions. The initial octet is mandatory and contains 8 bits to indicate different packet types for the receiver and transmitter. The so RX portion in the PDU header handles tentative and selective acknowledgments for the payload data. The TX portion indicates the payload length, the number of blocks, the block size, and which blocks are being transmitted when dealing with multiple blocks of payload data. Now, onto the payload, in format 0, one complete payload is followed by a CRC covering both the PDU header and the payload. In the format 1, the payload is divided into multiple physical intervals, with each block of data followed by its own CRC. Each sequence of bits for the control header, PDU header, and payload goes through these five processes. To achieve two max symbols per second for different data rates, we use puncturing and modulation as outlined in the standard. Whitening is an option process for the payload data that helps prevent long sequence of zeros or ones. The BRE6 HDT standard defines the test limits for transmitter modulation quality, frequency drift, and ACP testing. It also provides test factors for different package configurations. Now, let's dive into a live demo. In this first demo, I will show you how to generate and analyze a format 0 HDT signal with 7.5 megabits per second. I'm using test case ID 9, which has a data length of 450 octets. Let's get started by opening Signal Studio. The software I'm using is N7606C for Bluetooth 2025. Ensure your license is valid beyond August 2024. To create the HDT signal, go to the top bar, select Format, and choose the Bluetooth Higher Day Throughput option. Then click the Setup page for Bluetooth Higher Data Throughput. For the preamble, set the set of choose index T9. In the control header, select the Format 0, and set the rate indicator to 5 for HDT 7.5. Set the PDU length to 450, and leave the payload settings as default. Now, we are ready to generate the waveform and export the waveform file. Next, let's switch to accepts for signal analysis. We are using the VXTPXY transceiver, which has an integrated signal generator and a signal analyzer. Bluetooth HDT is available starting with this release version. Now, let's navigate to Bluetooth, select Transmitter Analysis, press OK. To load the waveform, go to the Input-Output menu, set the RF power to minus 10 dBm, and the source frequency to 2.41 GHz. Click ARB Setup and lower the waveform we just generated. Press OK, and you will see a confirmation message. Next, turn on the ARB state and enable IF output source. Set analyzer's frequency to 2.41 GHz. Access will automatically detect the Bluetooth HDT signals. 
adjust the range as needed. You will see that the demodulation is correct and has passed the test limits. The results window confirms that the packet is now format 0 HDT 7.5 with a PDU length of 450 octets and a passing CRC. You can also see the modulation quality EVM value and frequency drift results. To view more detailed results, go to the display menu and select numeric results. The EVM limit is set to less than minus 22 dB here, as defined by the standard. If you want to modify this value, head to the limits tab and click on limit setup here. Here you can see the test limits for frequency drift and modulation accuracy for different data rates are all preset to match the standard. Next, I will demonstrate how to create a non-ideal source. Signal Studio allows us to add impairments. So, let's enable frequency drift for this signal. Let's switch back to XAPS. Let's lower the generated non-ideal source waveform. In the results window, you will notice the EVM get worse compared to before, and the drift rate is now zero as expected. If you check the constellation diagram, you will see distortion. It's not as clean as with the ideal source here. So next, let's change the signal's operating band to 6 GHz. Now, let's switch to XAPS. First, adjust the source frequency to 6 GHz and match the analyzer sent frequency. You will notice that the channel setting is disabled. Despite this, the signal can still be demodulated correctly at 6 GHz. For BRE HDT ACP testing, XAPS supports the higher band as well. Navigate to the frequency channel menu. Set both the sent frequency and the channel frequency to 6 GHz. Then go to the mass setup menu. On the limits tab, you can input the ACP test limit value. As you can see, the ACP test limits are already preset to match the standard. The power sweep will begin automatically in one MHz step. Now you will see that the ACP test passed, and at 6 GHz, the power is minus 10.67 dBm, as expected. The adjacent channel's limits here are all correctly set. Finally, let me show you a test with multiple blocks of payload data in format 1 at 7.5 megabits per second. For this demo, we are using test case ID 30, which has a data length of 1304 octets, a PDU header length of 70 octets, and an interval size of 192 microseconds. In Signal Studio, you can select Packet Format 1 to enable the TX portion for the multiple blocks. Now switching to XAPS, you can see the demodulation passed successfully. The packet type is HDT 7.5, the format is format 1, with the PDU header length of 17 octets, a PDU length of 1304 octets, and a vesicle layer interval size of 192 microseconds, all matching the configuration we set in the Signal Studio. So we are staying up to date with the latest Bluetooth specifications, so stay tuned for more updates. For more information and to download a free trial, visit our website. Thank you for watching.